I've spent a lot of time looking for a device, a seismograph, basically a DIY seismograph, so I could monitor earthquakes from home. And there just hasn't really been anything easily available on the market. So there are some projects out there you can build with magnets and springs and you know amplifiers that get pretty complicated. Um, so a few years back, a company came out with a kind of a citizen science project based around Raspberry Pis called the Raspberry Shake. And these things are really cool. They took a basically a sensitive geophone. I think the native frequency was around 4.5 hertz. So that's just how many times per second. Um, and they bandwidth extended it to drop that frequency down to, you know, close to zero hertz or just above. And so um, you, in, a, in essence, can pick up earthquakes that are extremely distant with this device. And they have, I think, a 24-bit analog to digital converter along with amplifiers and a few other things that come in this package that just attaches to a Raspberry Pi with their custom operating system. And so it's really just kind of a plug-and-play solution. It's, it's amazing. So I have one of these in my yard and I've been using it for the last couple years to monitor earthquakes all around the whole globe. And it's it's just fun. It's it's an educational tool and you can you can keep track of what's happening everywhere, not just locally. So you can pick up these distant earthquakes in the mag 6.5 7 plus range that are hitting thousands of miles away. And you know, these things ring the bell. They ring the earth like a bell. And these waves travel through the earth to your location, and this these little device you can get for a couple hundred dollars registers them. It's really amazing. Now, obviously, nowhere near the quality of something that you know probably like the USGS uses. But for just like a hobbyist scientist in their house wanting to pick up earthquakes locally and distant, they're they're a lot of fun. And so I'm going to show you the install that I put in for my Raspberry Shake. I have the model. They have a few different models available. Um, mine, I, I just got the Shake and Boom. So it has one vertical motion uh, seismometer geophone. And then it has an infrasound detector, which picks up uh, sound frequencies in the air that are lower than, much lower than human uh, capability of hearing. And then they have other ones like the 3D and the 4D. And uh, these are... These are they, they get more expensive as you go up the up the ranks. Um, so I, I got the uh, Shake and Boom DIY kit and I built my own custom enclosure for it outside. And so I'm going to show that to you and show how I kind of put it in. And then we're going to go over to the computer and take a look at the live feed from the from the Raspberry Shake and look at different types of signals that come in. And, and over the years, I've been able to decipher what a lot of them are. When you first get it, it's kind of confusing looking at all this stuff. Uh, but I'll kind of break down a few of them just to give you an inclination as to what you're looking at with some of these signals as they're coming in locally and uh, extremely far away. So let's get to it. Okay, so this is the external housing that I came up with for my Raspberry Shake and Boom. The model that has also the infrasound sensor along with the vertical motion seismograph, so, uh, geophone. And, you know, basically it's just PoE ran out. has a surge protector hooked up to a ground just right here so if there's a lightning strike nearby it doesn't fry my equipment got some dust can in there to help moderate the moisture content and yeah there's the unit right there so I lined the I poured this in a way that uh, I used some uh, metal flashing and then a sauna tube and I filled the gap between those two things with concrete and uh, this helps protect from signals like RF signals that might interfere with the infrasound detector and then it's sitting on a concrete pad and it is extremely sensitive it's amazing the signals that this thing will pick up locally and across the globe so I'll cover some of those here coming up shortly okay so after you set up your shake this is the interface for the operating system of it so there's some settings in here you need to fill in to get it online and streaming data to the sh the servers at the Raspberry Shake headquarters. And after that's all done, you can cruise over to Station View. And Station View kind of shows you all the shakes around the whole Earth. So there's typically a couple thousand that are online. Um, if you zoom all the way out, you'll see right now it looks like it's about 1,930 shakes. You can see this number up here in the corner. 
So it shows you the shakes that you're, the number of shakes that you're actively, actively viewing. And once you're all set up, your station will pop up in here. I am in this cluster that is down in southern Arizona. And all these little red dots are earthquake events that have been picked up by the network. So what's kind of cool is this network isn't confined to any one country. It's worldwide. And, you know, all this data goes to a central location, and it's all freely available to anyone that wants to download it. So if you want to view your shake, there's a couple ways to view the data coming from it. There's a program you can install in Python called RSUDP. It's a little bit more involved. It's not a requirement. Uh, they have a browser website that you can go to. Um, it's called the Data View. And literally, this just runs inside of a browser. It's really nice. Uh, makes accessing your the feed from your shake very easy. So this is where you can see the live data coming from your shake streaming up to their servers. There's a little bit of latency, maybe a couple of seconds. But um, it's really fun to watch this page because there's all kinds of stuff you'll start picking out. This top graph is the data trace from the Raspberry Shake's geophone sensor. And embedded in this trace, there's a lot of different frequencies. So you can take those frequencies and you can map them out in something called a spectrogram to kind of get a visual two-dimensional representation of the embedded frequencies. And so the Y axis here is the frequency from 0 to 50 hertz. And the X axis is your time. And then all these are the different frequencies the Raspberry Shake has picked up. So it's kind of quiet right now because it's like 2 in the morning here. But uh, there's a road about, a four-lane road about 200 yards from my house. And these are vehicles dr driving by on the road. So it's very sensitive. These are actually my footsteps from inside my house. And the Raspberry Shake is located outside my house 20 yards away. So it's actually it's so sensitive it's picking up footsteps in the house. I'm not sure what this signal is here. This might be a stereo system in a car. Um, I'll pick up my washing machine. I'll pick up my neighbor's washing machine. Um, and of course you get earthquakes as well. And that's, you know, it's fun to look at all these other signals, but that's generally what you're interested in. And before I look at an earthquake, though, we're going to check out a few other signals that I've picked up on this thing. This is a typical signal from a helicopter flying over my house. So this is, this is really interesting. This is the main rotor here. And then this is the tail rotor. And you can see they spin at different frequencies. And there's something else happening here that you might not realize, but it actually captured the Doppler effect. So as the helicopter is approaching my house, the signal's increasing slightly. Then as it passes my house and moves away, you can see the frequency of the sound actually dropped. That's because the helicopter is then flying away from its own sound waves, which has the effect of kind of stretching them out. That's the Doppler effect. So you can actually see this in your data from your Raspberry Shake. It's really cool. And let's see, what else we got? Yeah, so here, this is fun little signals that are embedded. You can see how noisy it gets during the height of the daytime. These are all just vehicles driving by my house on that road. Luckily, they don't put a lot of energy out in that 0 to 10 hertz range, so the earthquakes still show up even, even during the daytime hours. The top signal here is my bathroom fan is running, and then I went and turned it off, so it's not running anymore. And then this signal is my washing machine. You can see it going through different spin cycles. So, you, you pick up all kinds of stuff on here you wouldn't think that you would, but you do. They have an Android app, uh, it might run on Apple too, that you can view these earthquakes in the app and pull out screenshots with the information about the earthquakes, which is kind of fun. So here's an earthquake that I picked up in September of 2022. It was a large quake, a 7-6, and it hit the subduction zone here off the coast of central Mexico. It was a thousand miles from my house. And look at that signal. Just look at that. Just massive signal from this quake. 
And of course this signal is going to show up mostly in those lower registers. The 0 to 15 hertz range. So that, that was a pretty strong quake that I picked up. Here's even a stronger quake that was much closer to my house. Uh, this is 295 miles away from my location. November 2022, it was 6.2 in the Gulf of California. And it hit at night, so the Raspberry Shake was, the, the environment was pretty quiet. And you can see I, I got signals all the way past 20 hertz from this quake. So a really strong signal. So that's fascinating to look at. Here's an example of a more distant earthquake. This one was 2,800 miles from my house. It was a 7-2, and it hit in the Alaskan Peninsula, way up here. And I still got a really strong signal here in Tucson. So, you know, like I was saying, these earthquakes kind of, they ring the planet like a bell. So these, these waves travel thousands of miles, and it's just amazing this instrument that just cost a couple hundred dollars can pick up these signals from all over the world that's just awesome so this is a lot of fun i mean if you are a hobbyist if you just like geology if science intrigues you um you can have a seismograph in your house just you don't need anything fancy you don't need to set it up outside you can just set it down somewhere quiet like in a basement and it will register earthquakes all over from all over the globe so I've been really happy with this thing. I think it's the best money I've spent in a long time. And uh, it's just, it's really fun to be able to listen to the earth like this in such a professional way. So head over to their website, take a look at their products. And, you know, I haven't been officially sponsored by them. I'm just doing this because it's something that I'm passionate about. And I hope you learned something. And uh, if you decide you want to grab one of these devices and set it up, drop a comment and let me know what you did. Thanks.